the topic of today's discussion itself clearly states that we are going to manage stress. We are not going to eradicate stress or we are not going to avoid stress. So which clearly evinces the fact that it is unavoidable, inseparable, and if properly channelized on some special and salient productive grounds, those are very much applied for the natural functional mechanism of the body and mind. So that is very transparent from the topic itself. Basically, we want to understand something. While explaining the weakness and strengths, they used to give an example. If a person cannot lift a mountain, that is not his weakness, but the strength of the mountain. But if a person cannot lift a stick, that is not the greatness of the stick, but his weakness. So, while doing things, we have been given with a basic strength as per our age, nutrition, surroundings, and other tools of perfection, we have been given a strength, a reasonable strength. Then there is an average value for that. It may be a physical strength or even a mental one. Whenever that exceeds the limitation of a person, there the body automatically boosts its own mechanism. The body is having such type of response. And uh, Dr. Iyer has clearly told that is known as Mastishka Mula, which he has stated as neocortex, that immediately responds to the need. Just as we have a reserve of petrol in automobiles, there is a reserve energy, latent energy, which is circumstantially evinced on needs of necessity and emergency. Just as even the weakest person, when he is there to be abducted, or somebody else uh, beloved or to be abducted, or his own jewels or possessions to be confiscated, then immediately this type of mechanism built inside, it orders the scattered random particles of strength that wanders in various particles of the body to unite in the form of either fist, which must evince as a very strong blow, which even the person could not have imagined how he has, he has done that and how he has blown the person. So this type of circumstantial emergence that automatically switches on the inbuilt mechanism where the abysmal, intensive, obscure, and latent systems of hidden particles of energy which are scattered undirected, they are unified and applied. It is there in natural human beings. When it exceeds the limit, already I told there is a limit, average limit, which may differ from people to people. And second is circumstantial boosting for self-defense or self-sustenance it occurs. And third thing, when if it crosses, the body gets a sort of unease or inconvenience. That's why we used to name this as disease, some sort of inconvenience in the system which indicates either the arrival of a non-essential element or pernicious element or departure of an essential one. That is indicated by dis-ease. Likewise, an inconvenience is experienced by a person in the form of physical exertion as strain and mental exertion as stress. So this is the scientific as well as the Vedic principle by which stress is there. Naturally, there is a shock observer and suspension, just as automobiles, we are also automobiles. We are physiomobiles. And we have the same systems of suspension and shock observer. Whenever these automobiles move, they can easily get with bushes and bearings. They used to sustain. They used to give the comfort. They used to balance in spite of the ups and downs and pits of the road. Likewise, in lives of normalcy and extremity, or even abnormality, we have some sort of inbuilt things. This inbuilt mechanism is destined by even traditional, genal, or even individually chromosomal, or a person's education or realization status, spiritual practices, then mental control and determination, intellectual status, surroundings, support, various type of these type of internal and external tools and gadgets, they support to determine and evaluate the person's tolerance status or suspension status or assimilation status, acclimatization and adaptation status, 
control stages. When it crosses a particular level, then only the person suffers. So basically, we must understand that physically there are some elements. While we discussed about the principle of ability to learn in the seminar and education, clearly 80% of the people they suffer because of lack of proper iron and iodine and due to the presence of various toxins and unwanted elements in their food habits as well as the genial inheritance may be there. So likewise, in stress and strain also, the basic food habits, the nutrition, that plays a major role. That's why the Vedas, they emphasize, Ahara Shuddhav Sattva Shuddhi, Sattva Shuddhav Dhruva Smritihi, Smriti Lambhe Sarva Granthi Nam Vipramokha. The basic value that is there in the process of thought and food, which is very much neglected by the Western culture. They used to adopt these type of exercises, drug mechanism and various other type of gymnastic works by which the physical subjection and even the mental subjection is there. But a moral and ethical background of having a sattvic type of the Vedic dietrics which we used to call as anto dietrics. The normal nutrition is different from anto dietrics. For a person who wants to be a very beauty uh, queen or beauty king, he will concentrate on cosmetological principles rather than nutrition and other things. And a person who just wants to be robustic, like uh, what we call mamsa pinda in Sanskrit, like a mountain of flesh like my Dyson, he will concentrate only on a fleshy and robustic body. He may not pay any interest towards development of sattvic qualities. Whereas a yogi, a person very much attributed towards a mystic perfection, he will consume a diet as per his own interest and destination. Likewise, basically, the food and proper balance of nutritional status that determines a person's health to withstand stress and strain, basically. So health is uh, the first initially very much understandable things. So we have to understand these two things also. One is uh, psychochemistry and chemical psychology. The type of ingredients that go inside, they destine our habits and behavioral expositions. And in contrary to that, there is also a simultaneous presence of a system of psychochemistry by which each and every thought induces an enzyme, a hormone, the secretion of an element inside the body. So your thought induces chemical secretions and chemical secretions, they in turn induce thoughts. So it is a mutual, anyonyashraya, we used to say in Sanskrit. Both of these things are interdependent. So one must start with good nutrition. This stress is a normal phenomenon of human body. Stress is not a disease. As uh, doctor has clearly stated, stress is the very basic, normal and formal function of human body. For example, if you want to know a thing, you apply the acquisitive stress, the stress that makes you to acquire. It is a stress of acquisition. Then there is assimilant stress. Grahana, dharana, sankalana, prayoga, each and every type of our methodologies of cognitive exposition that requires a stress for assimilation, for retention, for collection, reproduction and application, each and every cognitive faculty, each and every cognitive action that requires a stress. Stress is an urge which is normally inside the body and it is properly applied for getting any set of cognitive functions to get into acquaintance, to get into accomplishment. It is inavoidable. You read a book, it is a stress. But without proper interest, out of coercion, out of a lack of proper ability to learn, without proper instruction methodology, if you read, it creates a bibliophobia, it creates irritation, it creates hypertension, it creates ambiguity and confusion. That is of, uh, because of your non-compatibility and incompetency to go with that. So, I used to say always, most of the things appear to be abnormal because we are below normal. Most of the normal things appear to be abnormal because we are below normal. Likewise, most of the comfortable and easily possible things are appearing to be arduous and Herculean because of your incapability and lack of proper knowledge and training to manipulate that thing, to master that thing, to achieve that thing has not been taught either in the academic or in the domestic or in the fraternal or in the social areas. These peers, they deviate us from this path and get us into the path of entertainment, hilarity, celebrity, festivity and joy. So instead of lack of proper 
tunage in productive analytical study of application, we used to suffer. Stress normally, stress has been analyzed in the Stanford University by Robert uh, Sapolsky. They did a very detailed research on this stress. While there is a stress induction, it does five major things. One, the so-called stress that supplies more blood to your skeletal muscles, that induces your immune system, that increases the rate of operation of your heart and respiration, that dulls up your pain, and that is that stress which converts the fat and sugar into energy. So these are the essential mechanisms of both physical as well as psychological existence and sustenance. And mind also, I have already told, in cognitive approach, it is the stress which makes us to approach, attend, assimilate, retend, expose, apply and achieve things. These are all the modifications of stress applications. These things are eustress, yes, differentiated into eustress and distress. These things are the formats of productive stress which is inside the body. And this mechanism is transient and ephemeral. See, whenever a body, for example, excretion is a process of human body by which the unwanted wastage of the intestinal system is purged out. And if it causes a limit and continues to be a quantitatively rich pleasure, then it becomes a dysentery. That becomes a, some sort of discomfort and that becomes a disease. So there is a limit for things. There are two types of things. One is a normal stress or functional stress and second is sustained stress. If the stress is sustained, if it is frequent, if it is far beyond the withstandability of a person, if the person is already subjected to physical and neural dysfunctionings, if the person is already affected and polluted by any sort of diseases which may be intrauterine or even postnatal, infant diseases, infant diseases, intrauterine diseases, prenatal photostage of diseases, innumerable things are there which take their subtle form takes the deeper root and those things evince, manifest at the time of uh, proper maturity of your person's physical status as well as the maturity of the disease level. So the intensity and severity of the disease is evinced at a particular level but that observes silence in the incubation stage. So due to these various reasons, your person's stress becomes very pernicious. It directly approaches the hippocampus system. Clearly, it has been depicted in the form of PowerPoint presentation, which is uh, more appealing as well as which is more observable. The hippocampus system consists of smarakas. What is smarakas? The agents of memory in the apparent level, those things are eroded by means of these emotional stress hormones. These type of stress hormones, the natural hormones of the body, which they have clearly told, that is noripine prime, then adrenaline, all of these natural elements are there. These elements, they attain at the type of this second part of sustainable stress. These hormones, well induced, qualitatively and quantitatively rich and multiple proportionately, they affect the hippocampus system, contributing to the loss of memory, resulting in lot of consequential abnormalities and disorders. First, ecological, environmental situations causing stress, noise. I am an example for stress rather than stress management. You can see all types of stress that have, that have been totally consolidated and depicted in the screen. You can see all stress, ecological, environmental, internal, external, everything. I am a role model. So they can take me to all lectures for role model as a, a stress embodiment or stress personified rather than stress management. So these type of productive and non-productive as well as pernicious stress management has been already depicted in the Shastra as per the Western as well as the medical school of thought as well as the traditional school of thought in mysticism. We can have a small view and basically the stress is caused by instincts. There is associative stress, subjective stress and reflective stress is there. Basically, it means to say. 
the subjective stress happens to a person who is really subjected to that ground. Those who are subjected to the ground, they are subjected to subjective stress. If I am subjected to an accident, if I am subjected to some sort of discomfort, if I am subjected to loss, that is okay. Then reflective, it also reflects on persons who are connected with that, connected with the fruit. And associative, it is connected with the people who are associated with the act. For example, if there is an accident, the person who is a terribly wounded and excruciating pain is experienced by the person, he is in the subjective mode. And uh, that particular driver who may be also wounded and who has a responsibility he is also having a type of stress and uh, depression or some set of uh, perplexity that is there within the person. That is associative, that is responsibly and associative person. Liable, responsible association is there for the person. And it reflects on any person who just envisions this on the road or even the depiction of your photo in a newspaper or the same thing very structurally telecasted by the repetitive propaganda model of uh, the televisions. By this the person even though he is neither associated nor subjected, he gets the reflection as all human beings are having instinctive identity or anthropic identity, it is the nature of each and everybody's humanitarian status or they call the sympathetic status of mind, which is known as the clemential zone, we used to say clemential zone. This uh, clemential zone, it approaches each and everybody's pressure and pain and it takes root inside, shelter inside it and to used to get to the reflective and responsive stimuli we used to call. Then it is subjected to either uh, weeping or laughing. It may be even adverse in the case of some people who weep when the person is healthy and cry when uh, the person is uh, healthy and uh, used to laugh and be happy if he is sick. Depending upon a person's altruistic nature and brutal nature, it differs from person to person. These type of stress particles, they come from three major areas as per the Shastras. One is domestic stress. Second is academic stress and third is professional stress. These are all the three major areas. Apart from that, there are a lot of other various uh, financial crises and political, then various other reasons are there. But still, for a normal human being, domestic stress, academic stress and institutional or professional stress is there. And these things are governed by these three major schools. One is the subjective authority and second is the associative authority, third is the reflective authority. Six major instincts govern this principle according to Shastra. One is uh, two Fs, frustration and fear. And three A's they used to say. One is awareness and uh, second is anger. First of all, these things we have to classify, each and everything is a byproduct of the other and they are interrelated, but they have also their own individual status. And anxiety. And the last thing is inability. Wherever there is a responsibility, inability to commit, or even after post-commitment, inability to execute and accomplish, that creates stress. So this is a proper type of planning by which there are six instincts, frustration and fear, anxiety, awareness, and this uh, in incapability in execution, anger, anguish and anxiety, these are the principles by which is the person subjected, associated and reflected. Everybody is subjected to the stress and the vicious circles of stress consequences. Basically, we want to say something. We can write lot of principles. Be happy, laugh daily, love your neighbor. You can love your neighbor, but you cannot live with your neighbor. You have to live in your circumstances. So these things are comforts. They are not fallacious statements, but in practical applications, self-rectification and introspection is required and mere verbal comfort or mere oral comfort that cannot come for rescue. For example, somebody told that uh, you do meditation, the principles of relaxation or a lot of these things have been thought. If your person is stressed to over debts or loss in business and if the other people 
those who seek responsibility for repayment, they are just waiting in the threshold. You cannot, you cannot say that I am relaxing, I am doing exercise, come and participate with me. We cannot do that. So, basic thing is, there are two types of stress. One is avoidable and unavoidable. Apariharya and pariharya. If you are, that is why I included awareness. Anxiety, twara. Achieve more, I want to achieve more, I want to learn something. Before evaluating your capability of performance, you must not get into things. By imitation, somebody does the thing, I want to do the same thing. So such a type of long jump without having the masculinism to do that, on the basis of mere hope, or a dry confidence, or just to faith, Without any proper tools of application, proper tools of infallibility, if a person gets into a task, either in business or in studies, taking something that is beyond his capability of execution, see, there are two things. It must be a bilateral growth. If a person studies more, then immediately, for example, I am taking water in this. If I want two liters of water, then the container must be different. If it is expandable, I have to expand it. If it is replaceable, I have to throw and replace it with a bigger container so that it can hold it. So each and every status, desire and deserving, that comes for the contradiction. There may be some rule, invisible rule of fortune, which makes the barriers of deservingness to be totally devoid of any rationalism or any prudential reasoning. That is okay, but it is not applicable to all. So this avoidable stress is there. You are taking, for example, I will take IT. I will take mechanical engineering. I want to become an astronaut. See, by seeing some uh, cinemas, Having some people, some type of uh, people as role models without minding their backgrounds and their levels of achievement and the tools of achievement, just a mere desire to get into a task, then you are getting into the stress. Without planning, you are getting into a business. With utter hope. You see, without having anything in, uh, that is how Valduvar uh, used to say, Kundreri Yanai Bor Kandattan, Tankoi Tundre Unta Gachayvan Vinay. You must have the tools of execution in your hand and then jump into the task. That is as safe as seeing elephant fight from an altitude, from a secure altitude. And without any proper tools, uh, seeing that elephant fight amiss the trampling feet, titanic feet of an elephant is very dangerous and that causes peril. So this type of, I used to say, 70% of the stress is avoidable. That is your mistake. 10% of the stress is due to your nutritional or psychological imbalance. 20% requires counseling, practice, meditation, exercise, etc. 70% of your stress, for example, if you want to do marriage, then you must know. For example, somebody, uh, uh, they came to me and when we are uh, organizing some sort of a spiritual program, they told that, no, we must think of our limits. Then I told that if you want to construct a house or conduct your daughter's marriage, then you are not thinking of your limits. You are thinking a design and you are extending your limits by mortgage, selling, loan and any methodology possible that is by uh, human being on earth used to exploit all possibilities and you go for the construction of the house. So you desire and fix your status and you don't fix anything as per your present status. You desire a status and having a clear fixation on it, you try to tempt and be flexible to that without sparing any effort. The effort being either adorable or deplorable. You at least bother about that. So likewise, planning. Three things are there. He told about vigilance mechanism. What is vigilance mechanism? Anything may occur at any time. So proper saving and proper type of uh, emotional caution. Meticulous step in each and every action. You're crossing a road, how much you are looking the both sides and you are crossing. Likewise in life crossing also. In crossing each and every pavement, we used to say a lot of unforeseen, unpredictable events and circumstances. So, vigilance in each and every step. Planning everything within the ambit of a person's capability. And thinking several times. And scientifically analyzing things before being executed. These things are required which will reduce the stress. It is the best way. Most of the stress things. See, you do things, for example, somebody told that, I am very much suffering, I am suffering from insomnia, I did not sleep for the past uh, one week, what happened? Um, that is, I have uh, admitted my daughter to that college, they are asking 4 lakhs. 
you admitted there only after coming to know that they are asking for four lakhs and you don't have that four lakhs. Both of the concepts have been known. Knowing that you don't have it and knowing also knowing that they want it, then only you admitted, then you are saying that the consequential stress is there, I am suffering from indigestion, lack of appetite and insomnia, it is there. <laughs> so expand your resources or shrink your desires. Plan it properly and execute. Most of the stress-causing elements will be suppressed and they will be under your control. The rest of the things we can uh, uh, design and decide within the ambit of neurobiology, neuropsychology, psychiatry, mystic sciences and other practices for which scholars are there. But this is as an ethical principle of proper planning and execution and having a contented life. It is the duty of the spiritual people to deal with that topic by which 70% of the people in stress will be comforted or otherwise they will think that the stress is very much just and they have to go through that. At least they will have the guts that, yes, it is reasonable, I deserve that, I have to go through that, thank you. That will be the statement of the people. Either they will, either they can eradicate it or if it is properly indicated, they will accept it if the multitude and magnitude of gratitude, it will be there. Next, these type of qualities like anxiety avarice and anger, all of these quantities are the essentials of a spicy life. If a person is not having any of these qualities, he must be either a person in a transcendental ecstasy, like uh, what we call a theocoma stage, samadhi, or a person must be dead or unconscious. Only that type of person will be devoid of these qualities. I told that there are two principles. One, having this, no doubt, salt is the essence of food. But if the food is salty, can you consume it? <coughs> Anxiety, that something is going to happen. Awareness, that I must get intellectual gain. And anger, that everybody must follow ethical principles. So proper match of these qualities with proper consequences or tools. Proper degree of match of these things. Proper proportion of evolution of these things. And proper circumstantial relevance of applying these things that gives you productivity and you are more boosted with intellectual bliss and spiritual perfection. <laughs> Where you have to be anxious? Not in seeing sensex or uh, gindi raised results. Where to do these awareness and where to be showing our anger and where to show this frustration? Where to evince fear? Fear to be immoral and non-ethical. So if they are properly applied on regular grounds, it will be very much useful. I have recently been to the Institute of Cognitive Research at Allahabad, where I delivered a guest lecture. It is a only one institute of its kind in India. Recently I have been there and delivered a lecture on these cognitive sciences. Then in the interaction with people, lot of people, they have been doing lot of projects. Only countable people. Uh, like uh, 30 to 40 students were there and doing PhD, one person was uh, specially considered about this depression. What is depression? How to measure that is the scale of depression and how to avoid stages of depression and in mentally retarded people and also in normal people how depression works and what we can do that. So like that we have been discussing. Now I have told about the forms of di this uh, distress caused by this stress, I have told some forms like domestic, academic and professional. These things have been analyzed. In domestic Shastra says, Jeshta Samana Nietzsche Yoho. Jeshta Samana Nietzsche Yoho. Where this stress comes, whenever there is a friction in relations. There are three possibilities. The old age people, it is a gerontological problem first. Second is matrimonial and third thing is progenic, we used to say. The first thing is between the old age people with their grown up sons, economically independent, self propelling sons. There is a friction and there is a consequential stress that creates a distress, that creates tension and other consequential harms. Between Samana Yoho, those who have to share like a bullock cart, both of them must lead the life between husband and wife. Misunderstandings and lot of uh, proper tunement is not there. There is no principle, there is no guidance. Complexion not constitution or configuration of the psychological structure and attitude of a bride or bridegroom is measured. Complexion, remuneration, reputation and various other type of material perfections are very much evaluated without considering the person's mental status. So that's why there is a friction. The friction results in collision. 
So that is also creating a lot of stress. So we cannot just give you a generalized medicine for everybody, husband or wife, they are quarreling with each other. So go to room separately, you go to this room, go to the room, meditate and do exercise. Okay. It is not there. It is impossible. It is nonsensical, humorous and uh, <laughs> ridiculous. And father and son. How? So that is a the therapy. One is, the first thing is the interpersonal psychological or psychotherapy. They used to say interpersonal psychotherapy. If a person is to be rectified, one must undergo that. If he needs nothing, the person who approaches, he needs rectification, that is okay. If the other end uh, is to be rectified and he has not surrendered or he is not easily subjectable to any type of treatment, what he will do? We have to enhance the tolerance level of this person or to <laughs> alternatively give him any other way of survival or peaceful way of existence. Eh? Practically, I am saying, we must have. The, spiritually, there are possibilities. Spiritually, there is a possibility of a, what we call subjective communication or parapenetrative vision and uh, implementation by which even a drunkard's wife is there. She wants some sort of rectification with the drunkard and she cries for this. If the same cry, if the same tears flow out of the eyes of the drunkard, it would have been a different and uh, different grade of effect. Because he is the person who is to be subjected to this uh, corrective and contributive type of treatment. But he is not subjecting himself. That is a problem. So where there are some sort of treatments which they used to say, you mix it in water and give him without his knowledge. He will, there are a lot of such treatments. Even without the cooperation, even without the intention and knowledge, cooperation, intention and knowledge of the patient, he can be treated. But in psychoanalytical studies and treatment, psychotherapy, it is very imp uh, important to notice that it is impossible without the cooperation of the patient. He must have the intention, he must have the knowledge, and he must have the cooperation. So, there is also one set of things, second I told, to increase the tolerance level and level of understanding of the person. That is known as cognitive behavior therapy. The second thing is there. So, these type of uh, therapeutical approaches are there in the cognitive and behavioral sciences as well as in uh, psychiatry by which a person can be treated. These type of domestic frictions. And third thing is disobedience of the children with parents. One thing is first generation versus second generation. One is uh, there is comfort, discomfort between the second generations, medieval generations and the blossoming generation with the earlier generation, the second and third generation combat. So conflict between one and two and elements of two and elements of two and three are the three major domestic frictions which happen in each and everybody's life. Like planting a tree in each and every house is the rule of the government. Whether they plant a tree or not, each and every house is planted with a friction, a type of conflict. The type may be different, the frequency may be different, the conflict ratio may be different, but still it exists or it must have been existed or it will exist because it is the eternal rule or the eternal truth of human sociological evolution. Whenever we evolve, we grow with conflicts. The major evolution is there, you will get lot of conflicts. The more scientifically you develop, you will get lot of scientific conflicts. The more technically you are upgraded, you will get technical quarrels and technic technical fights, battles and wars inside the house. This is domestic. Second is academic. <laughs> this academic stress, you see persons uh, on 10th standard, persons especially if in the 10th standard, if they are appearing simultaneously for these professional courses entrance examination, especially for qualifying examination like CAT, MAT and lot of things have come. And especially if the person is aiming for IAS, and if a person is entering into IIT, you see the level of uh, the stress of the person, level of tension of the person. Already 10th is a very difficult one for it gives a turning point. The type of anxiety and perplexity, it is not that the subject stuff is nothing, but still 10th, it is a competition, it is a public examination, lacks of people write. So this type of impression, without getting into that, there is an inceptive impression which creates the examination fever, examination hall fever, question paper fever, syllabus fever, stuff fever and various other consequences of that. So if the person is having the additive of IIT, IAS and other things in various standards of uh, SSLC and HSC, you see the person, he will be totally looking like an alien. All the persons, emotional levels and softer levels of emotions 
re compassion some eh? pity recreation rest relaxation everything is sacrifice is it the way of the person to be educated not reading anything that is we used to say insomnia opposite is hypersomnia not reading anything and reading simultaneously lot of things not eating and overeating we used to say likewise not reading properly see there is your duration and dosage in medicines likewise there is a stuff and there is a cognitive level of absorption cognitive assimilation ca we used to say based on that level one person must be fed and he must realize and relish that meaning and he must imbibe that syllabus not doing anything being careless throughout the year at the time of examination he gets it there uh, suddenly he gets a transient urge to get into the syllabus and master everything how it is possible so that erodes his memory capability that makes a, that gives a short term memory even after writing the examination you cannot reproduce anything the next day you ask somebody they cannot answer anything even the question paper will appear to be a foreign language print because that is a short term memory coerce memory transient memory that will not contribute anything this is a stress with the people is it really that is a productive stress but really practically is it pragmatically is it productive no that erodes the memory and future performance and possibilities of excellence of a student no student is excellent and if a student is becoming excellent you see all the iitians and everybody people i cannot say anything about shrinivasan generally i am saying <laughs> they will look like as if uh, they are very much different they will look like uh, a heterogeneous creature and their emotional response approach and their softer tendencies will be totally eroded it will be either sold or mortgaged or converted into iit stuff so this type of academic stress is there starting from the basic level of education and in upgrade of a upgradation of education and the third thing is thesis making innovative project the first thing is elementary education elementary means not up to fifth standard up to 10th standard it is elementary it is basic education the second thing is directed education or upgraded education that is collegiate and post graduate everything etc and third thing is innovative where a person is doctorate post doctorate he invents and discovers things in this various stages how much stress they are subjected to and most of these people they are devoid of common sense they are devoid of common instincts they are devoid of common behaviors recently while discussing about a very famous atomic research institute i don't want to name the, the institute and persons just before a week i was discussing with few scientists they told that due to over pressure both from the power authorities as well as the managing authorities as well as the compulsion of their workload more than a dozen of people within the span of 2 years they have committed suicide very valuable scientists just before we i have been discussing with the scientists this type of stress there must be a balanced life what is a balanced life it must have knowledge acquisition acquisition of relations acquisition of personal pleasure and comfort personal thoughts then it must have rest relaxation recreation and some sort of spiritual contribution for a person's best beginning for a different type of life in the next life or even attaining the level of liberation which may not be common to our people so having a common distributive phenomenon of attention and subjection towards all spheres like physical psychological intellectual moral cultural and recreative spheres total dedication of a dry stuff of either academic or professional excellence that makes a person a talking machine and a walking animal and that erodes all possibilities of humanitarian benefits and if a person is unmarried or if it is a youthful benefit if a person gets all of these things as a youthful benefit that erodes the same possibilities in the gene transfer phenomena the children and the grandchildren so totally the progenic status is eroded and the children they are like machines like cyborgs we used to say in cybernetics evolutionary cybernetics they used to say after a few generations there will be a person very efficient in performance with no humanitarian instincts he is known as cyborg so after four or five generations we can say there was a one cinema battery is not included by steven spielberg likewise after four generations we can say that hey, my wife she has given birth to a robo very sweet and very robustic so this type of academic stress must be governed by easily allowing the people to go for a liberal status of having all proportionate possibilities of spheres in life 
with a reasonable attention towards academic and professional excellence. In profession also he is told there are three people, coordinates, superordinates and subordinates. And we have to gain the favor of the superordinate, the cooperation of the coordinates as well as the loyalty and perfection from the subordinates. And with various tactics we have to approach them. And this now there is uh, labor psychology and there is uh, industrial psychology is there, industrial relations that has also come as subject and moreover industrial laws are there, labor law, labor court, everything is there. So command, demand, shout, jump, these uh, things will not work out now. So we must know how to approach people. Only one thing I want to say. You cannot reduce any risk outside. You have to enhance your capability to face by means of exercises. Nobody is doing that. How we can reduce these things? So I have told stress management. Stress will come, you have to manage. Risk reduction. 70% of the risk you are making and you want to be risky and restless. So you reduce that possibilities. So the rest of the crisis you control with your power. So there is stress management, risk reduction, crisis control. This is how we have made that. So these type of three balanced ways in academic, professional and domestic, these things are the basic requisitions. And afterwards I want to become a prime minister and somebody else has become, I am restless. These things are nonsensical. Basic livelihood is determined by a person's domestic peace, academic excellence and professional performance uh, precision. So these things give a person a reasonable status and for that there are innumerable ways. I have already told about the Stanford University research. They have given five major, <laughs> I have given the forms and harms. What are all the harms of this thing? They told, they treated with a lot of medicines like uh, reoxetine and uh, serontin, lot of these things, uh, steroid and various things have governed with people and that has resulted in lot of uh, abnormalities in the physical and psychological functions. Whenever this uh, stress or depression is treated with these medicines, they saw people with uh, hyperphagia, hypersomnia, then unnatural weight gain, obesity and one more uh, thing also they have seen, if the distress is more suppressed by suppressors and oppressors and the so-called transient tranquilizers and pacifiers that results in one strange disease. We used to say in Naraga that there is that uh, particular disease or particular instinct. It is known as anhedonic. Anhedonism is uh, a particular way of experience in which the person has no ability to realize or relish pressure. He cannot relish pressure. Akarana, karana, 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 so says the Shastra. And hedonic and and melancholic, there are two bodies. If a person goes to the hell, he will be given the yatana sharira. What is yatana sharira? It is an anhedonic body by which uh, even if you pour nectar or ambrosia inside, he cannot relish it. And in Swarga, the heaven planets, he is given with an melancholic body wherein by the person, even if he is pierced with a red hot needle, he cannot realize the pain. So this melancholic and hedonic expressions are not there at particular stage. In heaven and hell, they used to say in Shastras. And we are ambivalent. We can get both eudaimonic and melancholic feelings. We are known as ambivalent. So our body is known as karana karana sharira. And that is known as akarana sharira. This is known as karana sharira. So ka means sukha, bliss. So these things are there. They are seen in few experiments where a person is treated more, whether the feeling of pain must be suppressed in painkiller. So over suppression of that pain that has resulted in this anhedonic situation by which uh, the person's ability to realize and relish pleasure has been totally eradicated. It's been extirpated. So this type of, uh, there are two types of therapies we used to say, non-drug therapy and drug therapy. Wherever you go into these drugs, lot of side effects are there. And only transient comforts, ephemeral comforts are experienced by people. And this type of stress in longer run, it affects all spheres. Physically what it does, number one. Loss of hair. And headache and backache he has already told. And also in IT professionals, especially repetitive strain syndrome is there recently. They are now treating for that RSI, repetitive strain. So likewise loss of hair, insomnia, lack of appetite, hypertension, hyperacidity, hysteria, intestinal disorders, indigestion, ulceration, all of these things are the blessings of stress in the physical arena. Second thing is mental. In the mental area, the stress, 
starting from a person's confusion, we used to say something. Even the wise people are confused. Even the worst fools are having clarity, but both are momentary, we used to say. So even from a small momentary confusion, ending in schizophrenia, it has a lot of pathways. Hallucination, irritation, irrational hostility towards even known elements, selective, partial, contributive, attributive, circumstantial, visceral, transient types of amnesia and cognesia. These various other mental disorders are the fruits of stress in various grades. Intellectual disorders like oblivion, lack of proper memory, lack of timely reproduction is also somebody will have a super stupendous memory but only after they cross the threshold of the examination hall or the interview chamber because of the circumstantial fear which we call sabha kampa stage fear chamber fear hall fear we used to have different type of fears there we want somebody used to say, if i give some mantra or some exercise somebody used to say except towards you with anybody i can narrate it then I told her, I have given that and you have to narrate only to me. So if somebody asked that, if you come out of the hall, I will explain everything. <laughs> there is another. Proper placement of reproduction status and proper area of reproduction must be there. So acclimatization of your person's intellectual status to varying grounds. If a doctor says that uh, I can do wonderful surgery, but if I see the patient, I get uh, troubling fear. <laughs> what is the purpose of the surgery? Surgery must be done only with the patient. So, application on essential grounds, application that is having patience, having skill, having patience in areas of confusion where you are having that nervous trauma, that is the wonder greatness of patience. Only on contrary exposure, characters are boosted and colored. You must be patient on grounds, on circumstances where everybody will be impatient. You will be stiff and you will be stable in some area where everybody will be confused and troubled. That, that shows precision, that shows mastery, that shows the dexterous functioning. That must be there with people. And it must be qualified, you see, each and every panel, it is a very good panel. You see, one person with yoga therapy, one person as a psychiatrist, one person as a, in biomedical sciences, one person in uh, yoga and mind studies, and one person as a neurophysician, neurosurgeon, neurobiologist, and this is, this is the panel. Each and everybody must have a lifestyle. You are learning a lot of things. Learning Japanese, learning Espanol, learning photography. A lot of things you are learning. Likewise, each and everybody must have a possible way of getting the fullest syllabus. It is a single day. It is just to create. Just they will give you a sample piece. And they will show trailer of cinemas. If you see the trailer, you can understand the important components of the cinema, which shall kindle your zeal to see it and if you like each and every inceptive person will be forced to see it any number of times as possible depending upon this quenchability of his uh, thirst and taste. Likewise we are showing a trailer, a conference cannot be a full cinema and a full cinema cannot be a full life. Cinema is a trailer to life and a trailer is a, a pre-trailer to cinema. Likewise it is a pre-trailer by which we have to conduct at least a workshop for two or three days and which you have to adapt with periodical checking and consultancy with the exponents, then only you can lead a life of comfort. It is not a two hours phenomena. So, this type of physical, intellectual and psychological debilitations are there due to stress. And one more major thing is moral, moral debilitation. This type of stress, for example, if I have hostility, if I have hostility upon anybody, if I am a weaker person, I will go for suicide. But if I am a ferocious person, if I have the same distress, I will commit homicide, I will kill you. If it is with a, a mass terrorist brain like Osama Bin Laden or somebody, he will commit genocide or ethnic cleansing. The same level of stress, depending upon the person's status of execution and his background and his power. For example, if I am having power, a limited power, I can throw you out. If the same anger or discomfort or friction is with a powerful agent who is also a crooked person, then immediately he will behead you, execute you or expel you. So this type of distress with a commoner is just simple. It may affect him 
or at least his family or his surrounding. If he is a manager, it will affect his subordinates. If he is a conductor, it will affect the normalcy of a bus transport. If he is a driver, it will take everybody to heaven. So it is different in cases of different persons on the basis of their responsibility levels. So if the same thing occurs to a prime minister or a decision maker or a lawmaker or a serious person, it is very cruel to the society, it is very dangerous. So the stress we must not take into consideration as a normal thing. Stress in a normal person is normal. The same stress may occur because the person in the highest status, he is also a physical, biological bulk of instincts. So it may occur to those people. <laughs> if mad person is given, uh, if he is embellished with power, then that uh, totally changes, that totally descripts and uh, changes the fate of the whole subjects of the nation. So, starting from the impressionable age itself, we must try to eradicate this type of stress. <laughs> starting with the person being totally against the family, being a hostile husband or an irresponsible father, it will make a person irresponsible social servant if he is in Saudis. And moreover, it may make the person to get into disruptivism, rowdyism and terrorism. So it is not an easy subject. Even the same stress management, if it is with the person who has initiated, who has made the efforts for a terrorist way of survival, by which he claims that he can establish peace or his kingdom, if the same realization management has been taught earlier in his younger age, Will there be any possibility of seeing these uh, disastrous results of bomb blasting and other things? If the same conference, either as a conferential or as a, or as a confidential way of teaching, if it has been privately or publicly or properly imparted to those persons by a proper governing, caring parents or by an able master of guidance in the school or by any person, any conservative person who is interested, interested in social welfare, at the level, budding level itself, if a person has spotted out and taught the same thing or treated the same thing, will, be, will we be seeing this type of ugly, disastrous heads that are spoiling the society? Making each and every citizen denizen of this globe to feel insecurity in each and every move outside or even inside the house. Nobody can have a peaceful survival because improperity, not doing proper steps. Now we have to take this into account to prevent. Now there is a government. The people sitting here, they make the future globe. The government now it has taken care by military services, investigation services and intelligence services. It is now taking care of the available disruptive, rowdy and terrorist elements that will take care by its power of arms and ammunition. Let, let them do that. But to prevent the future generation to get into these things, these people are the agents. Their values are not recognized. Going to a psychiatrist itself is considered to be a shame nowadays. It is self-correction, self-rectification. What is that? To see a psychiatrist itself, they are willing to see even a conjurer who is there with uh, the bones and the skulls. But to see a psychiatrist, they are afraid. So they must have psychological consultant. Mind governs everything. See, I have already told that you have the body, but something happens to you. You go to your doctor and ask what is happening. Because you own the body and they know the body. Your mind. But if something happens, how you can understand it is subtler than your body? You have to go for the governance and guidance of an able instructor. For intellect, for spirit, everything. Those things are subtle, subtle, subtle. You have to go to a proper consultant. Proper streamline must be made. This mainstream only will annex all type of possible energy boostings and totally create a trouble-free society in the future. This type of disruptivism and everything is nothing but the moral degradation of the single spirit or spark of this stress, which becomes a distress, which becomes a depression, depression becomes anger, anger results in conflict is in the macrocosmic level boost into hostility, then multi-level and multi-dimensional hostility resulting in mass murder or genocide, ethnic cleansing. So these are all the various levels, norms, forms and the various levels of treatment. So we have discussed with these cognitive level people. So they told for five major things in Stanford University. One is you do exercise. Regulate your body movements. Exercise. And second thing is relaxation. Just as you are committed to your work, we don't want you to divide the work because it pays you. You take a time for relaxation and do a relaxation is nothing but doing a lighter work or an admirable work. 
if your already existing work is admirable, that becomes source of both remuneration and relaxation. That is there. This is the second thing, relaxation. And third thing is social contact. Always you contact with your friends, like-minded people. Don't be isolated. If you are isolated and idle, you will become the warehouse of all sorts of negativities and evilness. So have social contacts with friends, with your family members and relations. And somebody told that these people who you told, they are the real reasons for my distress. <laughs> In social contacts, all the persons enlisted, they are the real root cause for me. If it is so, there are so many blessed personalities who have their relations, friends and domestic agents as wholesome stockists and distributors for this negativity and uh, discomfort. If it is the case, then you establish some kind of uh, contacts with Atma Bandhus, with spiritual like-minded relations where you can get solace and comfort that you can extend. Social contacts. Fourth thing is attitude. It is not so positivism or positivity or positive attitude, it is governed by proper planning and execution. Doing everything precisely and having the hope the hope must be assisted with the perfection. That perfect hope is known as positive thinking. Imperfect and mere hope, which has no substratum, which just is an air castle, that is always pernicious to a personal development and sustenance. This uh, attitude is healthy. And fifth thing is healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle, he has already told, smoking, alcohol, drugs, these are all the things to be avoided. We used to say vidhi and nisheda, that are to be inhibited and prohibited. Both must be governed, like Aushada and Patya. <laughs> if a person is taking a cough expectorant mixed in Aruna ice cream, will he get the relief? Because to discard the ice cream is your Patya and to take the expectorant is the Aushada. It must be simultaneously governed. Likewise, not uh, doing the things, not doing the things which are prohibited, as well as doing the things which are inhibited or stipulated, that gives an ambivalent governance of your salubrity. So these things are the principles laid down by them. And according to our school also, we say about four major principles, yoga, meditation, music, and dance. Yoga and meditation, that requires self-involvement. Involvement. And music and dance, you can envision, you can be a spectator, not even a performer. Yoga, you cannot make a person to do yoga and just being a mute spectator, you cannot get the benefit. And meditation also, somebody due to meditation, I'll sit and watch is not there. But music and dance, we are getting both benefits, even by being an activator as well as a spectator. Even if you are a performer, you are getting the benefit and you are getting the same a similar benefit even if you observe that thing. Because that type of experience, both by optical or visual experience or subjective experience and objective experience, both gives benefit in those two things. But you must have interest. In yoga and meditation, involvement is the criteria and interest is the criteria in music and dance. There is a song also in Tamil. Tumbam Nerhayil Yad Adithini Imbam Serka Mataya. It must be a statement of a music lover and a patronizer of arts. If a person does not release music and if he is totally depressed, if the wife starts playing Veena, both the head and Veena will be broken. <laughs> so, one must have interest in music and dance. And one must have involvement in yoga and meditation to get the fruits. These are some set of things I want to conclude with this in this uh, trailer and there is a Mozart's impact which is very much read in this cognitive study where the Mozart's music it develops a person's attitude as well as uh, the principles of learning ability to learn and mathematical and aesthetic uh, parts of the brain they have found in the research that they have been boosted so these type of things are there really Mr. Krishnan a yogic exponent he has come and we have invited Amade who is a music exponent so a lot of other people are there I have consumed a lot of time and uh, taking this as a preliminary issue, I least bother about uh, this type of imperfections. When uh, we went to that uh, media and ethics seminar, I told that if a thing is not uh, satisfactory, then I will go for a second attempt, like Gajini Muhammad. So next month, next month, in the month of November maybe, we are taking a different subject after discussing with the exponents and conversant authorities in various fields. We are going to take a different uh, stuff and we are going to organize with a different type of staff with proper advertisement and reaching the focused target and beneficiaries of this message. We are going to organize with a whole full structure of uh, a very stupendous performance. So till the level of my satisfaction, I used to continue uh, 
tirelessly conducting this type of conferences because I believe that more than the hearers, more than who are present here, I believe that it permeates in air. This type of positive, committed, unconditional service of dissemination of knowledge permeates in air. You are also carrying the same type of inhibitions. This type of uh, these positive impulses carried by you, you are knowingly, unknowingly, you are distributing the same thing to your relatives, well-wishers, friends, your neighbors and all other people. So it permeates the atmosphere, consecrates and purifies the atmosphere. And it is no doubt a small step for your giant leap. Narayan, Narayan, Narayan.